Montana and um, Chew. Uh, Chew, all, all three out of the line. How much of that is guys struggling at the plate? How much of that is Madison Bumgarner being a tough left handed pitcher? Or am I overthinking it? And it's both. Uh, it's both. I think Mad Bum, you know, I've seen him a lot, you know, in my time in LA. He's tough on lefties, and obviously the numbers back that, but it's just a, it's an uncomfortable bat for lefties. So, you know, obviously Chu and Willie, you know, we have a lot of right handed bats. You know, these guys have had good camps. I want to see them play. You know, Garcia and, and Heine, you know, they're here for a reason, and obviously we want to see them, you know, perform against that. But yeah, it's, it's a little bit of everything, I think. Um, just looking for a little bit of a spark. Thanks. Um, I think Jolie, you know, he'll be ready probably before Montero. He could be ready sometime on the on the next road trip, you know, maybe in the the Oakland series. Um, he's progressing, you know, nicely. He's you know, he feels great. Everything's uh, the life on his pitches are good. Health wise, he's fine. Um, Montero's probably a little bit behind that. Maybe after the next uh, next home stand, he, he should be available. Um, but he he feels good as well. He threw a really you know his bullpen ball was coming out like we expected. Um, so that's good. It's good for both those guys because we need them. So Joelle's got uh, like one or two more lives or what's left for him? Yeah, I think he's got two more um, before we can potentially activate him where we feel comfortable. That would be enough. Um, but, yeah, overall he feels he feels fine right now. And Montero still in bullpens or live DP? I think he's still in bullpens. He's getting ready to throw a live soon. Um, I don't know exactly what day I have the schedule, but uh, in, a, in a few days, I believe he will throw a live. Our next question, Evan. So I was wondering about this. You, um, you went with Heineman. He's, he, he, of the guys you have right now, if you're not going to play Danny, Scott is the best defensive option in center field? Uh, yeah, I think so. I mean, you could put you could put Solak out there as well. I, I feel comfortable. I know Garcia is fine out there as well. Um, I just felt like both those Garcia and, and Heineman are are probably you know the two mo that have played the most out there. You know, I, I do think Solak will be out there soon. Um, you know, if Danny continues to struggle, or we just you know, I want to see Solak more of a you know potentially every day try to get him in there. Um, that could be in center, that could be in left, could be DH, could be at first, potentially at third. Um, but I just want to get his bat in the lineup as much as I can. Is, is so, is you feel comfortable? This, this people have talked about this being a big center field. The, the roof is is somewhat tricky. Nick is a new center fielder. Are you comfortable with him playing center field in this park? Uh, yeah, we've seen it enough. I mean, I saw it in the inter squad games. Uh, that's why. I, I, I chose Heinemann today, just obviously the comfort factor of Heinemann having played center field often. Um, I don't think it's an issue out there, and I trust Nick. Obviously, you know he he's going to do everything he can to work. The problem is, is like when he's kind of moving around, I just don't feel it's fair to him to kind of put him in that spot. Um, you know, especially right now, we need you know all the consistency we can get, and you know I'm willing to you know put Nick out there. I just I just don't think in this spot it it makes sense to put Heine out there. Um, Chris, the, uh, on, on, um, on Solak, or do you have to turn, I, I know it's only four games, but do you have to turn to forcing him into the lineup more now? I think he's kind of earned that, you know, in my mind, you know, he's, he's our, you know, probably most consistent at bat, you know, throughout the, the camp. I mean, he, he's done that ever since spring training, he's done, done that ever since last year. Um, you know, the, the, the issue with, with Nick is there's like no true position um, that's available. So that's where it's, it, it becomes tricky, obviously, getting him in there. But, you know, the rest of the guys are going to have to understand, like, I have, you know, if I want to get him in there and he keeps having quality at bats, he's going to be in the lineup. Um, and that may kick a few guys out at times. Um, we may, may have to rotate him around, you know, just to get him in the lineup. Um, and that's, that's something we have to do as a team. We have to do it. Say Lance Lynn's not going to hit, but it seems like sometimes we've seen it before in baseball when you send the ace to the mound, 
um, suddenly, you know, the offense becomes alive is, you know, if it's fired by or whatever. Um, but it is nice, right, to get your ace back out there. And, and sometimes that can help the offense in some ways. Too. Yeah, I think it just, you know, kind of takes the edge off because, you know, you kind of relax. You say, listen, we only have to score one and you end up scoring 10. Um, I think that's where our offense is right now. You know, psychologically speaking, at the beginning of the year, it's tricky, especially in a in a normal season. It's tricky if everybody gets off to a slow start because everybody tries to do too much. They get out of their game plan. They get out of their approach because um, they're trying to be the one to, to spark it, to, to get us going. And um, they have a quality of bat, and then the next guy doesn't. Um, that's where the frustration comes in. And guys, you know, like I said, typically do things they don't normally do. Um, but when your ace is on the mound, you know, everybody kind of realizes, hey, you know what, maybe you only need one or two runs today. You know, and everybody just relaxes and calms down and, you know, just quality of bat after quality of bat, and then you push three or four runs across. Um, you see that a lot. So hopefully that's what uh, that's what happens today. You've had to do a lot of things so different, obviously so many of them with the protocols and the pandemic, but even just from a day-to-day managing your players' um, you know, aspect, um, I wonder how it's being received, things like, having a conversation with Danny after just a couple of days or, you know, changing the lineup as quickly as you might not otherwise do if we had 162 to play. How, how do you feel like that's being received? Um, listen, I mean, I think, you know, I think I tried to set the tone early before camp even started and just tried to let everybody know, you know, pitching staff, you know, bullpen, starters, um, our offensive group, you know, I, I challenged them to be very team first, knowing that, you know, I may make you know quick changes. It's a 60-game season. I mean, I you know, listen. I I trust every one of our guys in that locker room. But you know, if, if I feel like it's best for us right now, you know, I may pinch it. I may not start a guy. And they understand. You know, hopefully they understand that. They understand what's at stake. Um, like I said, everybody in that locker room, I think, is trying too hard right now. You know, we just kind of need to take a step back and be like, listen, just relax. You know, get quality pitches to swing at get your A swing off and move on. You know, I mean, we can't get so stressed out about, you know, four games. You know, there's a lot of teams around the league. I look at stats and they're all over the place. You know what I mean? And that's, uh, I don't want our guys to get, you know, panicked about it. Now, I mean, as a manager, like, I have to make sure I'm doing what's best for what I feel like for our team. And I think our players should understand that because I've, I've made it clear from day one. You mentioned your experience with Madison uh, and, and the times you've coached against him. Uh, well, Will you and have you shared some of that uh, experience, that intel with the guys to know what to expect from one guy today? Yeah, I've talked to our, you know some of our staff. Good thing is Louis Ortiz, our hitting coach, had the same <laughs> experience as a hitting coach um, against him. So, you know, we have some definitely common knowledge of this guy, and uh, he's good. <laughs> I mean, he's good. His velocity is not the same as it used to be, but he's a good pitcher, and he's going to execute. You know, we got to have a game plan against him, and if we do, I feel confident. Um, but he's not going to give in at all. He's a, he's, he battles out there. He's a, he's a warrior on the mound, but um, we just got to have quality bats one after another. Thanks, Woody. Next question, please. Let's go to Jeff. Hey, what did you think of Jordan's little outing yesterday? And, and you, just needed him, you just needed to pitch before, um, what, Saturday? Yeah, no, I thought he was really good. I, th- I was really hoping I could get him in there yesterday. I was hoping it would be uh, the, the reverse of that where we were up a little bit. Um, but I thought the ball coming out of his hand, it, it looked a lot like his last outing, I thought. Um, we were just kind of let it rip from pitch one. He, uh, his curveball had a lot of bite to it. That was kind of the pitcher we saw, you know, that we signed, obviously. Um, you know, he made some guys look kind of silly on that on that breaking ball, especially down. So it was good. It was a good outing for him. Um, I think it's a good uh, segue into his, next, into his next start. Okay, thank you. Next question, please. Let's go to Chris. Uh, kind of off, off topic a little bit, but I, I'm just curious. Uh, we talked to Jesse Chavez, and he said some pretty, you know, pretty good things about uh, Jonathan Fernandez yesterday. And I wanted to, to get just get your perspective on if you know Jonathan's asking a lot of questions to a lot of the veteran guys in the bullpen. You know, you know with Edinson or, or you know, uh, you know, obviously uh, Jesse, but uh, just. Is he kind of being a sponge out there? Like, what, what's he doing to try to learn? Uh, yeah, I think that started, you know, well into last year. You know, maybe in Double uh, A, he was he was kind of scuffling. I know he talked with our staff a lot, so he started asking a lot of questions. And he came in to throw a bullpen last year, you know, and saw a few of our guys. Um, you know, this spring training, I challenged him to, 
you know, obviously Chavi with the two-seamer, you know, they have a lot of similar characteristics. Obviously, uh, Jonathan throws a lot harder, but, you know, the characteristics, the way the ball moves, Jesse's done a really good job of helping him understand, you know, where to start it and how it moves and how to get swing and miss, um, how to get ahead with it, all those things. So it, it, he has been a sponge. You know, there's a lot of knowledge down there, you know, especially with Volke and, and Chavi. Um, you know, and hats off to, uh, you know, to Jonathan because he's, he's trying to be, you know, he's tackled pretty much every aspect of his game, you know, mentality, you know, physically, everything. He, he's, he's in a good place to understand how to use it. And you can see the results out there are kind of showing. And that started in spring training. I mean, he's, he's been doing this ever since spring training started. Other questions? Jared. Hey, Woody. Um, Bumgarner's walk rate against lefties is historically low. And I know hitters don't go up looking for a walk. But for your lefties, how does that impact their approach or understanding of what to expect when you have a guy who's got those sorts of numbers? Um, yeah, I mean, with the low walk rate, obviously, you know, both Ruggy and Joey, you know, handle lefties pretty well. And I think they both, you know, don't mind the ball moving a little bit out over the plate. I think that's where Ruggy does a lot of his damage. So, um, you know, Mad Bum's going to have to, if he's going to have to pitch him inside, I don't think that he's comfortable doing that. You know, it's just his arm slot from way over there. He knows that that's tough for a lefty to see. And his ball just, you know, everything kind of moves away from lefties. So both of our guys, I think, are decent matchups. And Ruggie's had success against him in the past. So, I mean, I don't know if Mad Bum's going to change his approach at all to how he pitches those guys, but they can expect strikes. That's the one thing, you know, you go up there against Mad Bum, you know you're not going to get walked, especially against a lefty. He knows he has an advantage against you. So he, you know, he makes quality pitches against lefties. And, you know, it's not a comfortable at bat for them. And I know guys like him – for them to have success at this stage in their career, you mentioned losing velocity. They got to find other ways to to get out. So in your last couple years with the Dodgers, when you I guess saw him more, did you notice specific changes that he made to be able to still have success? Um, yeah, there wasn't as much power, obviously, up in the zone with his fastball. Um, you know, it's just kind of. He's really good. He, he commands the baseball really well. You know, he can backdoor his slider. He can backdoor his, you know, cutter, curveball. He, he, you know, back legs it to uh, – back foots it to righties. He does a really good job of kind of mixing all the different quadrants. And, you know, he understands the game plan and he follows it. Um, but he, he doesn't blow you away with, you know, 95, 96 like he used to. You know, it's 90, 91 most of the time. And, you know, with a little cut, you know, curveball, he, he's not afraid to, you know, throw your weakness over and over again to you. Um, but he's crafty out there. He's, he's a good pitcher, and he's got, uh, you know, he comes, he's not afraid. <laughs> he's definitely not scared, you know, and that's, uh, like I said, he battles his butt off out there. Awesome. Thanks, two more, Take two more questions, Alex and then Evan. Woody, so after today is going to be the first road trip you guys are taking, so for the first time you guys are going to be out on the road with the news yesterday, uh, with the Marlins organization, did guys show any additional fears? Because that visit clubhouse is currently right now being used by Padres. Now you guys are going to be coming in and using that Giants visiting clubhouse. Was there any extra worry? Um, no, I think we've we pretty much as an organization taken care of a lot of that. Um, just trying to communicate a lot of the things that you know we expect out of our players. You know, everything that uh, from the protocols to our code of conduct, everything, you know, we've, we've had discussions about it. So I'm pretty confident that we should be fine. Um, but it's just on our players. It's just the responsibility on all of us to just, you know, kind of do what we're told as far as uh, following those protocols. Uh, and we should be okay. Thank you. Evan, you have the last question. That's singular. Uh, what you, what you, you had one st- one start with Willie against a, a left-hander. What are you, what are you seeing of anything on um, Willie's comfortability against lefties right now? Um, yeah, I mean, uh, it's. I, I always trust Willie. I, th- I think, like I said, he has no fear. But at the same time, you know, I want to make sure he's okay. Um, you know, that was obviously traumatic <laughs> to get hit in the face by one. So um, I'm obviously keeping that in mind every time I put him in there or don't put him in there. Um, I want to get Willie going. That's you know, I want to make sure he's a big part of our offense. Um, but at the same time, not put him in a in a vulnerable situation where it creates an issue. So you know, he'll first chance I get, I'll probably try to get him in there today. You know, if they bring in a righty. Um, but at this point, like, I'm gonna kind of take it easy on him. 
Thank you. That's the end of my question. Okay. You hear me? Uh, first question, please. Yes, they are. Uh, Chris, what does this victory mean for your team? Uh, it means a lot. That was uh, emotions were up and down pretty much that whole game. Um, you know, just for our offense, uh, our pitching obviously did well. You know, that, that's been kind of the, you know, our best. Uh, they've been performing really well the whole time. Um, so to kind of pick them up when they, you know, gave up the lead, uh, I thought our pitchers did fine. I thought Chavi made some good pitches, just really unlucky. And then Jonathan, same thing, check swing. You know, a couple check swing hits that we couldn't really defend. Um, but for our offense to kind of pick them up, um, it means a lot. And I know we, we showed a lot of resiliency last year, you know, late in games. And, you know, the, the, the walk, I think uh, Rugi's leadoff walk against the lefty, and then Joey battling against, you know, with two strikes against the lefty, laid off a couple of, you know, chased a couple early. Those are huge at bats for us moving forward. I think that, you know, kind of snowballs and it leads into the, you know, the, the havoc we want to create on the bases, everything that we talk about. We were able to implement today because of uh, because of the quality of the bats late in the game. Um, so it's a huge victory for us. Obviously, we, we got to continue. We got to keep stay consistent with that same uh, same approach. Uh, next question, Evan. Chris, playing off of that, um, there were three big at bats with two strikes in that inning. Odor's walk, Gallo's home run, Solak single to right field. You know, two of those were the opposite way. It just seems like that was kind of the template for how this team has to approach this ballpark and, and, and offense in general. Yeah, I agree, and it's something that uh, Louie and I were talking about earlier. You know, I think as a as a ball club, when you're when you're struggling or when you're trying to just scratch and claw to get hits, you know, we mentioned that a lot with two strikes is lowering our sights. You know, you look at the outfield, you see how deep a lot of those outfielders are playing. There's a lot of room out there, um, especially with two strikes. Now, early in counts, when we feel pretty good against an opposing pitcher, you know, obviously, you know, we want to drive the baseball. But even then, it doesn't have to be, you know, if we just miss a ball, maybe it goes out of the park instead of a fly ball to, to the outfield. Um, that's something I think we got to keep in mind as we get going um, throughout this season is, you know, use the, the ballpark to our advantage. And I think a lot of guys are kind of buying into that. You see Elvis with the two-strike hit up the middle, you know, obviously got us the lead. All those bats you just talked about, um, those are critical. I mean, those are those won us the game today. Thank you. Um, oh, uh, one other thing. I'm sorry. What's the situation with Jose Leclerc? Um, he felt a little uh, shoulder tightness as he's warming up. So we're going to obviously evaluate him today and, and into tomorrow to see, uh, see what exactly is going on. Um, but at no point was we're going to risk that, um, you know, putting him in the game. If there is a little bit of tightness and we can avoid any kind of lengthy injury instead of putting him in the game. Okay, sorry. Go ahead. I'm sorry. Jeff? Well, what, what signs have you seen earlier in the game that indicated that the offense was on, a, on, its, on the verge of a big breakout? I think it was more of the mentality that our players had prior to the game. I think uh, – you know, I feel like we've we've been in a good spot. You know, we had a really good conversation with the hitters today. You know, they kind of led it, um, and a lot of their comments, you know, led me to believe that they understand. You know, what's at stake. You know, there is urgency, but there's no panic. And you know, our staff has been great through that. But you know, I just felt like you know there was a calmness about us today. Uh, it took us a little bit, um, you know, as it has the last couple games. But I felt like if we could just you know, one good at bat, one big hit, we kind of break things open, and that's exactly what happened. Then the, I thought a big play earlier in the game was Tanner Celeste getting picked off, but, but not getting thrown out. Uh, I guess he needed a break. What's that? I guess he needed a break. Yeah, we haven't, uh, you know, and then the check swing hits, and you were kind of looking at it going, okay, you know, this is not really going our way right at the moment. You know, I thought Chavi threw the ball well. Even the double to Peralta was a good, well-executed pitch. Um, you know, in a fly ball, it, was, it just seemed to not be going our way. So um, we kind of overcame that. And uh, like I said, it was just the resiliency of the team at the end of the day. Hey, a couple more games here. So John Rod again, and then we'll go to Sam. Yeah, what about the, t the game Todd Frazier had? What he, he really you know, kind of opened the floodgates in a way for you? Yeah, he talked about that today. He said he was going to get Bumgarner. Um, he, I think he says he's going to get everybody. He's pretty confident uh, most days. Um, but the one thing about Todd, he's pretty streaky. 
uh, so he can, you know, one day not look as good and then the next day get four hits. And obviously today with, you know, a couple doubles and a homer. Um, yeah, he kind of sparked us today for sure. Yeah, that's that's the report I got. Obviously, I haven't uh, I haven't talked to him just yet, but um, it, is, it was in his warm up, getting ready to come in the ninth. Anything else quickly for Woody, or let him go.